This is Ugodowski of We Are Change at Oregon. I'm joined by the one and only Richie Allen of the People's Voice. Now we're here in studio after just finishing two hours of broadcasting and we could go on for more so you're watching this video. Now Richie has been a part of other media agencies before. He is now at the People's Voice. He has a show here uh, that people could check out that will be in the description below. But Richie, you worked in media a lot and uh, it seems like there's always bias, whether it's American mainstream corporate media being beholden to its advertisers and also government ties for licenses and permissions, or whether it's even the so-called some alternative foreign media that gets money from governments and is automatically slanted. How has it been working here for the People's Voice? Um, there's no bias. <laughs> I can say that. There's no bias here. Um, I'm a little bit hoarse now, yeah, because you and I have been on air for two hours, um, yeah, yapping away. Um, there's no bias here, Luke. Yeah, there is bias in the media, um, whether it's a commercial radio station owned by a family or whether it's a, a, a station owned by a conglomerate. There's an editorial policy. There's a point of view that's being expressed through the programming. Um, at TPV, there isn't. We, um, you know that David Icke had the idea for this back in, I think it was back in May. Uh, of 2013 and along with uh, Sean Adel who's uh, the producer of the Richie Allen show uh, they set about making um, the idea a reality um, and, and you know by now and I don't want to bore your viewers um, in their legions um, but he uh, they raised a significant amount of money on social media not on social media on um, how do you say it on, uh, Indiegogo what's yeah. that called Indiegogo uh, crowdsourcing Kickstarter, that's the yeah. one um, yeah and, um, and, 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 and got presenters in like me and said, right, we want you to find people who are saying things um, that wouldn't ordinarily get on the mainstream media. People that are credible now, they have to be credible for a start, you can't just bring any you know, lunatic on, but they've got a credible point of view, but they're being ignored. Go out and find them, and bring them on and challenge them, but fairly, irrespective of your own opinion. And I think we can be, I can be called a lot of things, but what we do, what I do here and what we do here is just that very thing. We bring people on from all walks of life. We've had MPs on, former ministers of state here. I mean, I can't believe it. We've had, we've, we, we, we've had mainstream politicians. We've had far, far out conspiracy theorists all on the same programmes giving their opinion with a host who treats them exactly the same. Now, you know that's not always the case in the media. You know that Lindsey Graham will get treated very differently on Fox News than maybe... Uh, like Julian Assange that gets questioned about the hypocrisy of Ecuador. And Aaron Burnett never... We, we asked Aaron Burnett of CNN, like, why don't you grill American politicians? She only ever grilled Julian Assange, and it's embarrassing. It's really a shame. But it's good to see what you guys are doing. Uh, just continue, continue saying that. Well, we... Last Sunday morning, Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister, he was on the Andrew Marr show on BBC One. Now, I like Andrew Marr. I think he's probably an all right guy. I'd love to be as polished as he is on TV. I'm not as good as he is. He's a very polished presenter. But Tony Blair came on his programme to basically assert his position that he's got nothing to do with the current state of Iraq. Now, Luke, without jumping down his throat and being abusive to him, you and I would say, well, excuse me, former Prime Minister, let me just interrupt you there. None of the evidence supports that. You know, you are directly, indirectly, uh, whatever way you want to put it, uh, responsible for the mess that's in Iraq now. But he didn't, Luke. He didn't, Andrew Marr. He left and waffle on. Um, it was a cosy little interview. And at the end of it, it made me want to cry. Because while I'm not as polished a presenter as Andrew Marr, I don't look as good as him, I don't sound as good as him, but I'm 500 times a better journalist than him. Yeah. Because I would have asked that question. Exactly. And usually when people get big interviews with big politicians or corporate heads, there's usually pre-designed uh, pre questions that are approved upon before the interview. This is why you don't see Tony Blair on the People's Voice, and that's why I go out there and hunt them down. Now, now uh, Richie... You're the only guy doing that, yeah. by the way. You are the only guy doing it. If we had the resources to do it here, I'd be doing it as well, but I'd be following in your footsteps. Nobody in the planet is doing what you're doing, getting up close and personal with them so that you can see the whites of their eyes when they're asked a serious exactly. question. Uh, yeah. And hopefully that will change with the Indiegogo campaign that we have going on. But right now with the People's Voice, can you show us around? Can you show us the studio? Yeah, well, we're in, we're in um, our main on-air studio at the moment. Um, it's going to look very untidy now, of course, but these are... Obviously, we, these are our TV cameras here, um, our lighting set up. We're set up to do two or three different programs here. So we can, we can stage three different stages in this uh, very room here. It's, it's, it's cr incredible to think that publicly donated money paid for all of this, really, from an idea. 
Yeah. Um, the, by David Icke um, all, all those months ago. And um, we've got a green screen over here. It's where we do our social media from. I love green screens. Really yeah. sexy. You can make, make it look like you're in space. Mm -hmm. um, our LED lighting, again, all of this is all first yeah. rate. Um, all, all paid for by the people, which you're people. beholden to. Yes, you see see where the money comes from, you have to be beholden to. And that's why, you know, I got many job offers before, but I will never take them because the money will obviously influence everything. Yeah. But here at the People's Voice, it's all funded by the people, and this is what you guys We're have here. transparency. Yeah. I mean, we've published recently our figures for the first nine months of our business, and we, we of course, we had to file a tax return like everybody else does. Um, so totally transparent. People know where the money is gone. They might sometimes grumble about, why did you spend so much on this? And maybe you could have done that, but at least they know where it went. Exactly. Uh, which is always very, very important to know where your news is coming from. So we're going to do a little tour around. Look at the gallery. Yeah, look at the gallery. The gallery. Yeah. How are you guys doing? How's everything? Doing well. Hey, How are you going? Uh, very good. Very awesome. good. Nice show today. Thank you for coming. No problem. How's it like working for the People's Voice? I love it. In fact, the fact that we're back on air and we're actually broadcasting some stuff, it's, uh, you know, that fills my heart with joy. Awesome. <laughs> and I don't say that, you know, lightly. It, it's actually, it means a lot to me to be here and uh, the fact that we're back on bringing something that, uh, something new and something fresh, great, yeah. you know. Awesome, beautiful. Thanks for the good work. Uh, now, you know, People's Voice, there's many different phases, there's many different things that there's you guys go through. Director, just there, Sean, Sean, how you doing, hey, Sean? How's I'm good. everything? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? How's everything here at the People's Voice? It's good. It's good to be broadcasting again. We're doing the Rich Allen Show twice a week, and it feels like that's what we were made to do. We're here to do news and make TV shows, and I'm just really delighted that we're doing that. And we'll do a lot more of it. I want to get more people like you doing shows for us or coming in the studio, because today's show was, was brilliant. It went by so quickly. Now, what's next for The People's Voice? Where are you guys going? What are you guys doing? Uh, what's next is we need to get more people's videos. We need to get people, citizen journalism, we need to get people going out on the streets and sending us their, their stuff and us just putting it straight on air. That's what we were set up to do originally. So we want to keep all this news content in studio stuff. That's really important. But what we really want to start doing is getting people's videos, stuff, protests in Brazil, the World Cup at the moment, um, things happening in the Middle East, things happening in London, anywhere around the world, we want to get the videos and just get them straight out on air. So we're working we on... people to follow your example. Exactly. To do what you're doing, with your camera and your mic, and just run up to people and, and talk to them and um, get their opinions, like Sean said. And when they do that, like Sean said, we'll edit it, package it, and put it up there for them. Yeah, Not edit it in terms of <laughs> yeah. distort what they're saying, but make it, you know, tidy TV it up. Ready. Exactly, yeah. TV ready. Yeah. 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 I might be the managing director, but all I'm here to do is make sure the ethos is that we stay true to the ethos. I'm not here to dictate what goes on air, what yeah. doesn't go on air. All I'm here to do is just make sure there's a structure and that we survive. And really, it's the people's voice. So we really, really want to get people's videos in and yeah. start hearing from them. And it's, you know, they can make it what it is. And you have been very supportive of it from day one. And we want to thank you for that because um, <coughs> um, giving us access to, to your films that you make when you're out on the road, we, we you know, rebroadcast them. And, um, you know, we, we, we can maybe, there may be people watching us who maybe, maybe would not have seen uh, your films. There won't be many because you've built up a big following over the years. But that's been brilliant for us. And we appreciate that support. Yeah. And you made the point in studio, Luke, during the live show, you made the point, and you didn't really want to say what I think you really wanted to say. In the alternative news arena, I hate to use the word alternative, let's say the true news arena, we should be calling ourselves the true news arena. There's too much nonsense going on between people, too many people falling out because they disagree over something, too much of that rubbish. I love your attitude. Uh, we're all trying to do the same thing, so let's help each other yeah. where we can. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Put the crap aside and join forces and help each other out. I think what you guys are doing here is really awesome. I don't think it's biased at all. And whenever you guys do have a personal opinion, like you did, uh, Richie, in the show, you mentioned it. You're like, hey, this is my personal opinion here. This is what I personally believe in. And I think if more journalism comes from that honesty instead of doing sneaky things like editing things around or manipulating situations to push a certain point of view, uh, I think if we change that, I think the world would be a, a lot better place. Label it exactly what it is. If it's a personal opinion, say it's a personal opinion. If it's real news that you've just researched and it's unbiased, then label it as that, but don't pretend it's something it's not. Exactly. Which makes perfect sense. So what else do we have here in the studio here? You guys, Probably you know, it's, it's not that big well, of a studio. studio here, but it's not, it's not lit at the moment, so I don't I'll know turn a light on. I'll turn a light on for you. <coughs> Hopefully I won't get electrocuted. <laughs> Here we go, there we go. So this is where we made the band, which is a music program. It's a nice little studio, it's tiny. Um, originally this didn't even exist. This used to be part of the office. So that the, all these walls didn't exist. 
none of that up there existed, that stage didn't exist. So we built it for virtually no money. Mm. And it's actually really nice when all the lights are on and you have a band in here and a little, a little audience. It's a nice, cozy little little venue for comedy and music. It's awesome. nice, yeah. That sounds, that sounds really we got cool. a, there, are, there are a couple of names I'm going to mention because <laughs> people like Martin Noakes and Dan Goganian and others um, toiled endlessly throughout the summer last year to, to, to build all of this. It's really extraordinary stuff. And uh, we, we, we have plans for this studio as well. Just to clarify what Phil was saying, we didn't stop broadcasting. We kept putting out acquisition programmes, yeah. but we did suspend our live broadcasting for a couple of months while we um, gathered the funds to do it again. We and it's the reason why we're back now. We're also yeah. looking at, you know, we started off back in November as uh, a 24-hour streaming news organisation. Um, very ambitious, but it's what we promised the public we would do. And we, we, we fulfilled the promise. But now we've had the time to look at what worked and what didn't work. What, what's overwhelming is that people, they don't necessarily want a 24-7 streaming uh, uh, news channel uh, where they tune in at 9 p.m. and see one show and then tune in at 10 a.m. and see another one. That's not what people want. What they want is information. They want articles that are well-written and well-researched and balanced and not biased. And they want programs uh, with good interviews and information. And, and they do want the live element too when it's relevant, when there's things happening in the world where we need to go to a, a, a live protest or we want to grill a politician on something without it being edited or censored. They, they want that too. So we really are thinking behind the scenes about how we can deliver that to the people without breaking the bank and without being in the studio the whole time. I think it's important that we get out of the studio and we start doing things outside. Um, and I really think we need to start looking at the US as well. I mean, we've got people like you in New York and we've got people in LA and I really want to start getting shows from the US. We'll definitely start talking about that as well. Uh, there's a lot of different ideas we have. Let's go out of here. The lighting is horrible, but we'll continue on the tour of the people's voice here where everybody's working. We were just winding down now after the live show that you and I just did. So, yeah, well, this is our office effectively. It's where we put the shows together. Um, so our, our admin people are here, our producers. These are our producers and directors who are involved in the show today. Hey, Julian, our director, is Kiri. Hey. Peter, who's visiting, and Zach is our VT editor there as well. Um, we're off to see the World Cup. They're off to see, they're off to watch the footy. <laughs> and of course, football means something different where you come from. Soccer. Uh, the soccer, the soccer. Yeah, soccer. I was the soccer, yeah. Um, and as far as our office is down the end there, um, and that's really it. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's it. Yeah, it's a small but pretty labour-intensive operation. It definitely must be. Uh, I know it's definitely not an easy task to be the people's voice, to be independent media, but I think you guys are doing a great job. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes to be made. I think you guys are learning them as well and moving forward with them. I wish you guys the best of luck. Check out the people's voice. They will be in the description below. And thank you again so much for watching.